Good morning. This is the service for January 16th, the second Sunday after Epiphany. We will open with him 395 verses 1, 2, and 3. O morning star, how fair and bright. O morning star, how fair and bright. You shine with God's own truth and light aglow with grace and mercy of Jacob's race, King David's son, our Lord and Master, you have won our hearts to serve you only. Lowly, holy, Great and glorious, all victorious, rich in blessing. Rule and might, poor, all possessing. Come heaven, I'm sorry, come heavenly bridegroom, like divine, and deep within our hearts now shine their light of flame undying. In your one body let us be as living branches of a tree, your life our lives supplying. Now, though daily earth's deep sadness may perplex us and distress us, Yet with heavenly joy you bless us. Lord, when you look on us in love, at once there falls from God above a ray of purest pleasure. Your word and spirit, flesh and blood, refresh our souls with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Let your mercy warm and cheer us, O oh, draw near us, for you teach us God's own love. Through you has reached us. Will yours service setting one, found on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. We will continue with Psalm 128, read half verse by half verse. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. 
Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We return to page 152 for the Lord have mercy. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday after Epiphany, also serves as our basis of our sermon, is from Isaiah chapter 62. And note in the end, God expresses his marriage to the church. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your son marry you. 
And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to other, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one in the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll sing the Alleluia found on page 156. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? <coughs> You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, our glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, but did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day is hymn 394, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. Songs of thankfulness and praise, Jesus Lord to thee we raise, manifested by the star to the sages from afar. Branch of royal David stem, in thy birth at Bethlehem, anthems be to thee addressed, God in men made manifest. Manifest at Jordan stream, prophet, priest, prophet, priest, and king supreme. And at Cain a wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest. 
manifest in power divine, changing water into wine, and the spirit to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest in making whole, palsied limbs and fainting soul, Manifest in valiant fight, quelling all the devil's might. Manifest in gracious will, ever bringing good from ill. Anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Sun and moon shall darkened be, stars shall fall, the hem shall flee. Christ will then like lightning shine, all will see his glorious sign. All will then the trumpet hear, all will see the judge appear. Thou by all wilt be confessed, God in man made manifest. Grant us grace to see thee, Lord, present in thy holy word. Grace to imitate thee now, and be pure as pure art thou that we might become like thee at thy great epiphany, and may praise thee, ever blessed, God in man made manifest. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It has often been patro it has often been said in the history of our country that the United States is a city on a hill, a light to the nations, bringing freedom and democracy and capitalism and all the other good gifts that our system has that God placed here so that we could spread abroad these wonderful things that God has given to us. When I was growing up, California was the golden state. People wanted to go there. They wanted to visit and have vacation. Certainly in the Midwest during the winter snows, we thought of California and how beautiful it was with all the wonderful crops growing, with the sunshine always shining, with all the people and exciting things happening. The golden state to attract all attention and all notice. We can go on and talk about places and people that were supposed to be wonderful and awesome, things which were supposed to show to the rest of the world how good life could be, how good people could be, the right way to do things and the right way to have things. Certainly in the Old Testament, the place that was supposed to be that place the place that was supposed to be the glorious example to the nation, the place where everyone would want to go was the cross, the cross traveling road, the, the place where everyone should, should seek out a land flowing with milk and honey, filled with, with good dates and, and olive oil. The place was supposed to be Israel, the place where God dwelled with his people. And it was to be an actual light on the hill, not a light like ours, which gives out human-made um, ideas and human-made systems that are sometimes good and sometimes bad and sometimes fail and sometimes succeed. But a place set up by God with perfection at its root. And though the people in it were sinners, it was meant to be a light shining to the nation. And when they saw this wonderful land that God had chosen to be his people, a more apt description perhaps that God had married, when they saw the bride of God, the land of Israel, the people of Israel, they were to say, how beautiful, 
How glorious! How wonderful! Let us go there. Let us see the great king who has married this wonderful land. Let us bring gold and, and frankincense and myrrh because this bridegroom of God is so wonderful, the groom must be even greater. That's what Isaiah is speaking of in our text. Now, the unfortunate truth is Israel often acted like a whore and not like a wonderful married wife. That though God decorated her and God draped her with white cloth, he put upon her jewelry and gold and silver. He gave to her the perfumes, the wonderful frag fragrances. She used those things not to continue being a great wife to God, to serving her Lord, to making him first in her attention, first in her existence. She used those things to attract foreign nations, Egypt and Assyria, Sidon and Tyre, Moab and Ammon, Philistia and the Canaanites. And she took those into the marriage bed that God had created figuratively. And she sought them for protection and money and wealth and trade. And she saw them as someone to trust in and someone to be with. And the people of Israel forgot God. They turned their back upon him. They sought what they thought was good. And in the, pro in the process, they went from being his beautiful, wonderful bride to this horrible, licentious whore. Isaiah says, For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. God saw the way that Israel turned its back upon him. And God punished Israel. In Isaiah, this is at the end of the book, chapter 62. They're in exile at this point. God has punished them for, for the evil they have done. But God doesn't keep silent. God doesn't sit passively by. God sent his son. He announced it to the nations. He sent his son. And he sent voices of the prophets to his people so that they might repent. Prepare the way, for the Lord is coming. So they might turn back to God, turn back to their spouse, turn back to this wonderful relationship that they had with, with the one who served them better than any ever had, who would serve them better than any could. And in turning back to God, in being brought back by Jesus into this salvation relationship, in once again being made the bride by the blood of Christ, washing us clean, getting rid of all those sins we have done, God now presents us to the world once again. This is my beloved. This is my bride. This is my church. Look at how wonderful she is. Look at how she feeds the hungry and clothes those who are in need. Look at how she looks out for those who are part of her body. And look how she helps out in disasters. And look how she goes out and she tells others about me. This is my bride. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she glorious? Isaiah tells us that God takes his people, then Israel, now his church, in both cases, all those who believed in the Messiah, <coughs> who 
who was to come and who did come. He takes his people and he makes them glorious and uses that glory to spread the light to the nations. So that Simeon says, as he's holding Jesus in his arms, a light to the Gentiles and the glory of my people Israel, so that the wise men come and bring their gifts and they look upon the newborn king and they praise God that Israel exists that there was Mary, so that Jesus might be born. But out of this people God chose came the salvation of the world. And then it says at the end of Isaiah, and as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Not only does he save us and make us again, once again, his bride, pure, holy, and clean, not only then does he make us radiant and glorious and present us to the nations, never being silent, announcing, this is my church, this is my loved, but God celebrates. He has the great marriage feast like the one mentioned at Cana, where Jesus added to the celebration by changing water to wonderful wine. He celebrates, he rejoices, the angel saying, glory to God in the highest. Glory in Chelsea's Deo. He celebrates that we are his bride. We are brought into that celebration. We are made a part of that celebration. Here we see it lightly. But one day, not too distant, we will see it in full glory. And we will rejoice that God has made us his bride, that he has glorified us so others might see the wonders of what he has done, and that now he celebrates and he lives with us in glory forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue with the Apostles' Creed. We will recite it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Dearest Groom, we thank you that you have consented to marry us, and not only consented, Lord, but that you made the marriage occur, that you sought us out when we were lost, when we were gross, when we were disgusting in our sin and our death. And Lord, you took us and cleaned us up. Like the Good Samaritan, you patched up our ills and, and, and made us ready to live once again. And then, Lord, you glorified us. You made us your wonderful children, your wonderful church, little Christians who reflect the glory of Christ to those around us. Lord, make our church and our nation a place which displays that love, that love of Jesus to others, so that they too might be saved and become your bride, become those who celebrate with you in the great feast that exists in heaven at all times. Lord, we ask that you watch over those who have been given vocations to protect this land, whether it be the president, governor, mayors, legislatures, judges, or it be the police officers and soldiers, emergency workers, and, and those who keep the highways cleared and the power on. Or Lord, 
It'd be parents and teachers and childcare workers and those who protect and guide our children. Lord, make them glorious. Make them shine with the love of Christ. Make them seek your wisdom and then dispense your wisdom so that we might have peace and prosperity. Heavenly Father, we especially pray today for Irma, Joe, Gary, Margie, and Margie in particular, Abby, Wayne, Pat, Francis, and Ken and Elaine. And Lord, watch over the family of Stacy Payne. Lord, give them the knowledge that Stacy is experiencing the feast now of the Lamb. And Lord, be with Helen, Rick, John, Bev, Marie, Richard, Bev, Debbie, Eli, Edward, Amy, Connie, Jody, and Marvin. And be with all those who are sick and suffering these various ailments which have been passing around. All this we pray in Christ's name, putting into your glorious hands those for whom we pray and those for whom we don't pray. This we pray according to your Trinitarian name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to continue with our hymn of thanks, which is hymn 397. We'll do verses 1 and 3 of 397. As with gladness, men of old. As with gladness, men of old, did the guiding star behold. As with joy they hailed its light, leading onward beaming bright. So, most gracious Lord, may we evermore be led by Thee. As they offered gifts most rare at Thy cradle rude and bare, so may we with holy joy, pure and sin free from sin's alloy, all our costliest treasures bring, Christ to thee, our heavenly King. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will continue with the benediction on page 166. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 402, The Only Son from Heaven. The only Son from Heaven foretold by ancient seers, by God the Father given, in human form appears. No sphere his light confining, no star so brightly shining, as he our morning star. O time of God appointed, O bright and holy morn, <clears throat> he comes the King anointed, the Christ, the virgin born, grim death to vanquish for us, 
to hope and heaven before us and bring us life again. O Lord, our hearts awaken to know and love you more in faith to stand unshaken in spirit to adore that we through this world moving each glimpse of him proving may reap its fullness there O Father, here before you, with God the Holy Ghost, and Jesus, we adore you, O pride of angel host, before you mortals lowly, Cry, holy, 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 O blessed Trinity. Go in the peace of the Lord. Amen.